took about three months trying to get my driver's license. <laughs> and, uh, I, and my social security card back in the, in the days when I was young and working, uh, the lady at PGY got my, that's 54, I guess it was, got my social security card because she couldn't pay me. Well, she put Carol Hart on there. And believe me, if you don't have the right name on that social security card, you got a problem. <laughs> the social security moved, and they don't allow nobody in no more. And it, it was a real, real, but I got it all changed. It's all done up. And my poor old name, John, shows up on everything's mailed in anymore. I had to look back and change all of that for my checks were not clear. Oh, we just had a mess. But anyway, I'm John. <laughs> Emails and it says, John, I'm who to talk about. <laughs> but anyway, just to kind of get started here, if I can see all of this, uh, I was born on the August 27, 1939, and, uh, in a house in uh, Northeast 24th Street in Oklahoma City. Uh, from listening to some of the previous stories that have been told, I've had a very blessed childhood, apparently. I grew up with my mom and dad, my older brother. Yeah. It's okay, John. John. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how to get, <coughs> <coughs> uh, My parents didn't move around much, but we lived in three different houses there in Oklahoma City. And uh, from the time I was born until the time I left home, we moved, uh, at that point, three different houses at the time we got that home. So we moved from a house where I was born to the east side, and east side of Oklahoma City. And it's right near the fairgrounds. And a lot of dirt roads around in those days. A lot of dirt flying all the time during the fair, fair day. Uh, I was probably so high, and I parked cars up in our little backyard, 25 cents in the park. And I didn't like to park cars, and some people was up front had to wait for the victim in the back to do. can be in because they were driving all the time, but the next day they didn't park there, but somebody else did. So I, I just parked them there. <laughs> <laughs> Dad had to listen to them drive, not me. But we decided that Dad decided he didn't want to live close to the barracks and the noise and the, the dust and there. So we moved from uh, 1800 block on East Park Place and we moved across town to Oklahoma City to the 2900 block on West Park Place. <laughs> just right straight across. Wow. Well, there was between, between 10th Street and Reno and May Avenue and, and uh, Grand Boulevard. It was all woods, so dark, with a big pond out there in it. We went hunting and we even shot our 22 squirrel hunting down in there until one day came out in the paper that the fairground was moving. They <laughs> moved from the east side of town to a little walking distance again. My <laughs> dad was so upset. The cars were parking everywhere the time they had that all cleared out the field. So they, they finally came out with no parking signs up along the road and cut our street and they said made them happy. So we got that all done. And, uh, and that's we lived there until they all died off. So we just back and sold the house whenever that was all gone. And uh, but we figured out but at, at, at the time we all had that all three houses had running water flushable schools. And believe me, that was a blessing. It was. I remember when I went to uh, meet Sue's family down in Tokyo for the first time. You could only wait so long to go to the And I had already made my mind up. I was not going in that outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 when I had to go, I just walked out there behind the cellar over there with a cool tree. And I decided that nobody could see me, that's good enough. <laughs> so I brought my pants. I leaned against that tree, I 
about the time I was ready to do something, I looked up and I'm telling you there was the biggest old snake coming toward me. Oh, no. it's coming toward me or coming toward the tree. I don't I, I didn't wait around to find out. I pulled my pants up and I took off. Went straight to my little 57 and I jumped in that thing and drove five miles to the back. <laughs> Here's that moment, that was it. Well, uh, we wouldn't even marry at that time, was we? And uh, so her brothers got busy right after that. Still some food on the back of the house. And it was a bathroom, like a septic tank and all that. At least we had, had somewhere to go. And so that was built, I drove the tank. There's no other way. But anyway, I can say I had a pretty normal childhood. I hung out with neighborhood kids, played baseball at school, and in the summer, my brother and I and a lot of other cousins would go to my grandparents' house in Stratford, Oklahoma, and we'd help Grandpa bail hay and do other chores around the, around the house. So his bailing of hay was not pulling a tractor. He had uh, two mules and a big old horse. And I won't tell you the words he took that uh, to get the mules to move and doing what he does. <laughs> You would cut the hay, and you would basically break it all up in rows, and then you'd take the baker and stop it down in the middle of the field. And then a uh, mule on it, you would pull the tongue around while it slowly walked, and that pulled the plunger back and forth. And uh, we bailed the hay. You know, my job was open wires. There was, it was coming out, wired up, and your hands were just getting, I mean, completely tore up. But anyway, we did that, that was a lot of fun. And I remember one time in Stratford, we, uh, all of us cousins would all be together. And uh, we, uh, it, was, it was all pretty good old boys. But we couldn't, we didn't have a driver's license. Nobody thought we could drive. So I had an uncle that was, uh, he uh, hung out at the bars in Stratford until all the women in Stratford got together and got clubs and run their club out of town. <laughs> so they moved the bar to Paul Valley. So one, one Saturday night, he, uh, Took off the Falls Valley. He stayed most of the night, all the way. So three of us cousins decided it might be a lot of fun. We went to Falls Valley, we pestered him. So we decided we hitchhiked to Falls Valley. We did. We made it up there. Ran the car. We hit. We hot wired, and then we managed to drive up there back to Stratford, which is 16 miles, <laughs> and we parked it in the driveway. <laughs> all I could see on on. Uh, my uncle's face was a uh, puzzled look because he didn't know how his car got there. <laughs> and he never asked, we certainly didn't <laughs> I mean, when, when you're that drunk and you come home, you wonder, and there he is, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> we get behind, we get behind the house, we'd have to laugh at it before we get back to Well, I had the, my first job. I guess I had was uh, was telling about all those teaching wise, sweeping floors, cleaning shelves. And I was uh, pretty young. I think I was eighth grade. That's like 52 or 54. And 54 was when uh, she got me my first uh, Social Security card. And it had to care of heart. It turned out to be a problem 80 years later. <laughs> uh, anyway, I worked at that. And then uh, the shoe shine job, I went over and talked to the barber. Had a barber there kid tonight, and uh, I shined shoes over there while people get haircuts. Like, uh, people, you never seen one, set it down, he put his foot over and put on it, and just shine his shoes while get a haircut. And I've done that for 25 cents a shine. And Destel, he got on the barber shop, he furnished all the rags and the polish, and I just kept the money. Wow. And boy, I tell you, I piled that money out because everybody came in there, if they didn't get a shoe shine before they got a haircut, they'd wait on it. And had people in the neighborhood and the shopping center to prank with their shoes and warm by the weekend. And man, I, I was shining shoes and I was just wore out, but I was popping that money. I had a pocket full of quarters. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, dollars and dollars. Hey. But that, that wasn't it. And there it came from May Avenue. It was a pretty busy little intersection. I uh, started selling Saturday, Sunday morning papers Saturday night, screaming out. Get the Sunday morning paper and uh, be 
people to stop and buy those papers. I sold I sold more papers than they could bring to me. Uh, go down the street to a steakhouse, and I went down there one time, like I said, only four foot eight. And uh, I guess the guy felt sorry for me. And I walked in there with a paper armed papers, and he asked me about if I could go on there and sell some papers to some people. I heard maybe they people want to buy some, something while they're eating. It's a big steakhouse. Hey, he said it right along with me. He said, well, go ahead. I went in there, and I had to like, give me another little of papers because everybody bought them. <coughs> So I got to be a regular thing every Saturday night. I'd take more and more papers up there, and some of the people was eating. And uh, I didn't bother my mess, but that's not a woman paper on get that paper out. But anyway, that was my my first working job. And then I was, I was in the eighth grade about that time. When I was 16 and a half years old, my cousin Bill was a year older. He decided he's going to join the Oklahoma Air National Guard and go to train down in San Antonio, Texas. Well, that sounded like a pretty good name to me. So I talked my dad and decided for me at 16 and a half what you could do. And I turned 70 while I was down there. But, uh, I went down there anyway. And we flew down. Uh, we had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I was, I was 16. I was full of energy. I just didn't have to get rid of it. That's just the way I was. I went 90 miles an hour on the line. And so, after we got to the training part up there at Blackman, I uh, got to uh, watch the, the big white area over there where they where they done their, their training. And man, crawling the ropes, climbing the towers, and all that kind of stuff. Just under my skin, I had to do that. I just had to do it. So after about halfway through our training, that was our turn to go. There were 72 of us in our barracks. And we went over to uh, the area, took our packs off, and the TI came along, that's the training instructor, sent me on my helmet and said, Mark, you stay here and guard the packs. Well, almost tears come to my eyes. I, I couldn't handle that. I sit there and thought, but I'm not going to guard these packs. I may get put in jail, but I'm going. So I thought, well, I better do something. So I decided to go talk to that training instructor. He was way on the other end. So I went over there to him, and he just didn't walk up to the guys talk to him without getting in trouble. But I did. And, buddy, I had a look on my face, and I, I called him sir, and I thought, I, I tried to make him feel good. I told him, I have got to go through that training. I don't want to guard his hat. So he sat and stared at me and he stared at me. And I stared right back. And finally he started smiling. And he said, if you can find somebody that can guard them packs, you can go. Hey, I went over there and stood up in the middle of that bunch of people and hollered who wanted to guard these packs about four or five hands when I did real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so I picked one and I got to go. Had a, I had a lot of fun with it. I got the, we had a shell on our side, just to tell a quick story. They, they uh, told us now, hang on them shovels because when you get almost to the other end, you got to put that over your face when you crawl through the bottom bar, or on your back. And they're supposed to be shooting over your head, but I think they're using blanks. Nevertheless, it sounded good. But I got to that point in, uh, with our group, and <laughs> my shovel was gone. <laughs> I can't believe it. It fit a, a, a big old satchel that snapped. I cannot believe how I lost that thing. So I said, well, I think I'll work that, sir. I'll just go up across this big old grid on the He said, no, no, you go back through the course. <laughs> and so I've never been through the, the, the gas chamber house once, but it's so full cool and it was that tear gas that you just have to feel your way behind the window because you can't see. I had to go back through that and through all the obstacle course going backwards and everybody's way coming this way and I was going the other way until I found myself. <laughs> and then I had to come back through the whole thing again. <laughs> but I was having fun every, every step of the way. I really was. I, that didn't bother me again for some reason. And I got over there and I had to use my shovel and I got your gunfire going over your head but they had those uh, explosion things every once in a while. Along, you was on your back, so good. Every once in a while, one of them things would go off. Boy, that, 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 that scared you when that thing went off. But anyway, 
That's about my uh, my time at uh, my Air Force. So that was a NASA card. So the uh, reason I've done a NASA card, one reason I was, I was a 1A draft. So I hadn't done that. I've been drafted since I turned 17. And with the war ending in uh, North Korea, neighboring uh, town, Vietnam hadn't quite started. I just didn't feel like I wanted to go home or go away and anything like that. Just didn't, that didn't appeal to me. But anyway, I got back from there. I was four foot eight when I went in and flew down there and came back on a train. And I drove probably to about five, maybe five, two, five, three, had the uniform on, hat on. And I can remember standing beside <coughs> mom and dad waiting at the train station looking for me. And I was standing right there in the first time. And they didn't even recognize me. And I just stood there and looked at them. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. 
I thought as a joke, I would go to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, for no mountain. All pictures I'd ever seen in that thing, the snow was that high on the intersection, and didn't know where I was going. So I turned them down, and I turned down Sioux Falls, I turned down Kansas City, where we didn't want to go there, didn't want to go to Cleveland, Ohio. And then finally, Tulsa came over. And uh, so I went home and told Sue, we wouldn't be moving too far away. But what do you think? Because you're going to go with me. Here we go. It's up to you. She said, no, it's up to you. Where are you going? So, <coughs> we went out here in Tulsa. I told him, well, we'll be here about five years. Because where the company was going, was <laughs> he said, we'll probably transfer back to the small store to the bigger store. And that's kind of where I had to plan that. But five years have already gone by, and I'm still here. <laughs> Anyway, we attended church at uh, South Woodward, Church of Christ there in Oklahoma City. Uh, and we had, where all our family went, we were filled up with views. And we thought that that was, that was really great favorites when, you, when your family was filled up that much of the views. And then we also met a member of the Crane family. At that time, we called him Howard. We didn't know any, no any different until we got up here and met Bud and Crane, uh, Bud and May, and they said his name was Marshall. <laughs> that's, that's right. I guess it was Marshall. Howard Marshall. Howard Marshall. But uh, Howard's all I ever knew. But anyway, he and I attended a preacher's training class. And uh, we'd go after we finished that, we'd go around and preach on Sundays to the congregations who were uh, in the process of hiring a preacher or just needed someone to fill in. I mostly went to Stratford, Oklahoma, and that's where my grandparents was. Preached down there. Nervous wreck, but we got it done. And, uh, but Howard was, Howard was good. He was really good. I guess one of the churches we got to go to. Bless his heart, so bless him. And uh, he, was a, well, he was a fantastic Bible school teacher. Everybody was loved him. We didn't have the screens and the, and the films. He, he would take that sheet off the bed and lay on the floor and he'd throw that stuff out on that sheet and he'd hang it up in the classroom. But he got there and he, that was in Blackboard. And uh, he'd done that for a long time. I guess he's got a lot of sheets. <laughs> <laughs> but he was he, good at it. Uh, we went to the we, we went to South River. I was a deacon there at uh, South River. And then we had, we had our uh, House built was in Midwest City, and Sherry was about ready to a year to start kindergarten. So we thought we were going to quit. I just resigned as a deacon, and we went to uh, Midwest City and started going to the church there so Sherry could uh, go to school with the kids and she would to church with them. It seemed like the right thing to do, so we did that. Had to leave South Woodward, but uh, we did it. And when we got over there, found out we were. Uh, we were really blessed with a preacher over there. Uh, he told McCord was a preacher. I don't know if you know him or not. But uh, he, uh, he preached out of the Bible that uh, I couldn't follow. I, I didn't have a Bible that I could follow him. So one day I decided, I want to find out what, what the translation he's got. So I asked him to want to go. He said, yeah, he handed me his book, his Bible. Oh, that thing happened. There's all the hand scratch, and that was 100%. Greek or whatever it is he talked and he he read that Greek to English right out of that book. I mean that was that may have something else. Uh, we also had Lynn McMillan, up for the youth, anybody remember him. Uh, he was our Bible school teacher. And uh, so as soon as we, we went and started going there, we got to go to class with him a few times, but then immediately soon our teaching. And then I started teaching the young people. And then about that time, that's when uh, in October of 66, uh, that's when White Motor Company told me about Tulsa. So we, uh, we transferred to Tulsa. And we lived at 3rd uh, and Allegheny, this way. And went to East Side, it was called at the time. And we got classes there, we taught classes there. Everybody got, we got all familiar with everybody. 
and we had this house built up over here, and we were still in it. And uh, we uh, came here, and just about the time we got here, Sue went to teach the, uh, what, four-year-olds, and I went in to teach them the teenagers. And uh, the teenagers, we had uh, uh, Yeah, okay, makes this part. That, we've been here about 53 years, going to Carbon Day. <coughs> After we both started teaching, and we started teaching the teenagers, and uh, we uh, started taking the teenagers, and I didn't have enough to take them in, so Darrell Miller, remember him? Oh, uh, yeah. He uh, would go over to the YMCA out here, and he'd borrow one of our old buses. <laughs> There was an old bus, I'm telling you, but it, it got us where we was going. It took us to Oak City one time, it took us to the front of the city, and uh, we'd take these kids. They used to have youth drivers all the time. Oh, yeah. It was constantly taking these, they were like youth drivers. You, you went to so much property, didn't you? Yeah. And uh, it done a youth drive thing. Uh, well, we down the Illinois River, and it's, it took hours to get everybody to quit circling and try to figure out how to do it for <laughs> Man, you gotta learn how to pack them things. <laughs> and when I only done that, uh, like I say, we, we took the kids to Frontier City. Uh, we had parties in our garage. And take all the kids over there, we just, uh, I don't know if we really did them up. Had a lot of parties in our garage. So we even had some adults over singing songs, and we had bad one. And got a few pictures of that, not too many. Else we took more and more pictures. But anyway, one thing I remember about the uh, school, the bus, we had a youth rally going here in town. We, uh, there one got the bus, parked it out here, and we had one person show up. And I thought, this ain't gonna, this ain't gonna work. So I went and got the directory, and I started looking up the kids, and I started looking up their addresses. And me and there were going the bus, and about the first three kids, and we picked them up. We waited for them to get dressed, and boy, they got dressed in a hurry. We got the bus, and got them in the phones, I guess, started reading. By well, the time we got to the house, they were ready to go. <laughs> We loaded that bus. They kicked the youth out. But we took them that bus up. Well, and that was just because we we actually went around with the money. And that was a lot of fun. But, uh, and I know the kids thought it was a lot of fun. Kids and kids, you gotta do you gotta do silly things to so stay with you. And then I became the Bible school director here for about two years. That's what back when we had that. lots of classrooms. This is all classrooms here. And I've got the garage apartment out back, had uh, three classrooms in it. Every classroom upstairs and downstairs had kids in it. And I had two teachers for each class. And it was a job, folks. I'm telling you, I, I, I worked my head off. Because I had to go to work, but then I want to come home, I carry a little thick pad up here, and I check I don't care every classroom, every Sunday, make sure everybody had teachers. And the teacher wasn't there, I didn't find teachers. But the reason I had two is a teacher and a co-teacher. One of them will be home. Hopefully the other will take over. There's work sometimes. But anyway, <coughs> I remember us going to a, 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 a what do you call it? So a, a teacher workshop in Abilene, Texas. Went down there to a couple of times. But I remember it was one time. It was the first time we went. It was, oh, it was hot. Man, it was hot. We got, we got down there and they put stuff in the dorms. And uh, if you want to go to the bathroom, <laughs> you have to go you have to leave the room and go to a room with at least 18 stalls. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was, it was a mess. Oh, yeah, you yeah, got to go to the auditorium. <laughs> pull a curtain in there, there you be. Did they have a tree in that way? <laughs> Survive and sleep. It was, man, it was hot down here. 
Texas. But anyway, that was that was some fun times. We had more fun going out on the bus for everybody we had those got there. That was that was really fun. I mean we done it a couple of times and, and we played cards and we played games, we done those things. One of the bus drivers had the wrong broke several times. <laughs> it was kind of rowdy. Uh, but we had uh, get togethers at the Hills house, I remember lots of times. We'd have ice cream suppers. And I remember one time I, we had that ice cream and, and I would love home getting ice cream. I loved it when I went. And I went over there and I I, I brought me a big bowl. <laughs> Sell me out a big bowl. And I took a bite of that. And I looked over Gene Yates. <laughs> And he said, shaking his head, and he said, I can't tell you, taste of it before you feed your boat. <laughs> I could hardly swallow a mouth. Run out behind the house. Nobody was looking behind the tree. <laughs> and I came here out good, and I tasted the rest of it. <laughs> He was over at his house. Uh, we had pop up dinners after Sunday services over at his yard. And it was just some fun times. It just really was. And we, we, nothing wrong with having our stuff here, but uh, we didn't have this. We didn't have a room. We didn't have a room. A little congregation. We had more people going here then. And when we had to have some spread out time. And we had to, Jack's yard was big. Yeah. And we just scattered all over. But anyway, it, uh, we had uh, a lot of fun doing that, and we had the uh, great grandchildren's by wire, which was a big set up down here for four passengers out there back here, and then uh, there was a puppet deal, and we would have, we would have the Bible wire, and that was, that was a big deal. And uh, but we went during our bus program, and we had five buses going, and uh, passing out more candy to the Tulsa to produce. <laughs> and Tommy Gary was our uh, bus captain on number five I drove. We went to uh, 61st and uh, Union up there. And we went to South Haven and, and Saturday we'd pass out candy. And we'd go pick them up Sunday, we'd have to have more candy than we'd get on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> and Mom would stand out there with their little bitty babies, we'll press the baby set. Probably one time we got off the kid and all that. We said, they didn't know what he was going to do. <laughs> we brought that baby in here. We were throwing them in. We don't have babies. So we took care of it until we got back out there. The next time or something, you can't take it. You, know, you want a babysitter, you got to hire one. We'll take it. somebody you got to feed. Like that. <laughs> but, we had a we had a massive people. I don't know we had had over 300. A lot. We had five buses. I don't know we had about 60 kids in one bus. We had to have that many. We had to have that And all the rest of them done that too. So you can imagine five buses bringing that many kids in. Well, we was we was packed with kids. And that line on that side over there. And my job was to go down that back aisle over there and keep them quiet. <laughs> Boy, that was a chore. <laughs> Some of them you just have to go gang out and take out the thing about the building. But anyway, uh, and then all of the Bible school at the Batman, Batman Judge came about that time. We went to work with Jack. And uh, they kind of, uh, elders kind of called me into the room and they uh, prayed this one of the figures. And uh, what they really wanted to do was really wanted to to take over his Bible school record. He'd been to college, he had these trade and all this kind of stuff. And when they mentioned that, I guess they thought that's hurt my feelings. My insides started jumping. I feel like my feet to dancing in this. But I had to say it. He's really going to do this to me. Boy, I turned over to you, didn't you? We had uh, just to put 
we had families that went to Snake Creek every year. And uh, everybody planned their vacation, first full week in August. When you got back from that, you just run the vacation in California, plan your next first full week in August. And we got so many people down in that Snake Creek area. And that's the days they didn't have electricity over there. So we took our pump up lanterns and our pump up stoves and what our campers could have. And we put kind of lanterns outside so we could play cards. And then about a certain time we started singing and we sang until it was so tired we all had to go to bed. And uh, we had people from Arkansas that came one year and they came back every year just to hear us sing and to sing with us. They weren't members of the church. They, they loved coming over there. So. Anyway, we had to uh, have, we gave that up finally. And, but I, I was going to talk about Jeff, the second year, he's, he's, uh, well, hey, Scott's going to start kind of taking things over. <laughs> <laughs> they come in looking for food and all this there. And you just almost kick them out of your way. And uh, Carol Pippen brought a dog down there one time. And boy, he got sprayed. <laughs> oh, we had, we had to put him way back out there in the woods. And we, she poured the everything in the world on him, tomato juice and water and soap. And, and she still took him on stink. <laughs> no more dogs after the skunks. You can kick them around and hold Jeff. He just walk around there once in a while and get here and This is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> He just read my dad was close one time he heard to his feet. He never could laugh about that. That was the craziest thing I've heard. I thought I was doing stunts walking in and thought this is disgusting. <laughs> but anyway, listen, we had tons of fun in the same period. We went down there. Did you go down there? Did you go down there? We did get it out of the church. Oh. Uh, but anyway, whoever went, All it was a great time. We just get love going. We yeah. love it. And uh, you would get up in the morning. Get you a cup of coffee. Every time you got a drink, make sure where he's walking. The next camp, just people you knew, you just go in there and get you another cup of coffee. And eat. I mean, everybody knew everybody on that side of the Snake Creek. There's two different sides. I could go across the lake to the other side and just take the whole thing over. But nothing to us over there. Uh, but now we have this uh, fellowship hall. He was all out. And that's, that, was a, that was a big chore there. Uh, fortunately, I didn't have a whole lot to do, but they, I guess anybody else here could help me. You know, John Randy was a big part of that. Yeah. yeah, John Randy was a big part of it. Yeah. 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 yeah, and getting all this stuff. To make this what you have without poles here, we had, that was, it was quite a, quite a deal. I would have probably been here, but I didn't know about that kind of stuff anyway. I was out of work. And uh, so I didn't get in on too much of the making this room before I'm glad we did. It's really been a good, good place to be. And we've made that lifelong friends here.
the guy called me and barely cleared at 60. I raised that thing constantly. It only got beat one time by Corvette, the Gulf Wars, once four in Florida. And I don't know where else he had that engine, but it was a night, and by the time he came out of third gear, I couldn't even see his tail. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you, after that, I never lost another race. At one, at one uh, time in the night, set the carts drive in, and the guy could pull up beside me, and he had no 49 pull it was all hopped up. He wanted to go race. I said, I really didn't want to. He talked me into it. He had, uh, we went out to the Northwest Expressway, up where it's at the old city, right now, right up and down Baptist Hospital, and all that. That was, that was out in the country. Nobody could figure out why they built that for just wasted all that money. We used it for drag. <laughs> And uh, so we went out there, and this guy, uh, and this Ford won't look like to take off in second gear. I said, hey, I can do that. So that little Chevy, just about two little bumps with a clutch, I'd be doing 89 miles an hour. And I, I thought he quit. <laughs> so I stopped up there, I turned around, I started back, waved me down, he wanted to race back. And then he said, uh, uh, let's start that little here. I said, I thought you meant to look at Well, let's just do that. He blew that off. So I said, okay. I was going to, I carried him more the second time. I don't know if you know I did the first time. I was kind of irritated at him. So when I come out low, you know, I went up the second one. And I went up like that. And then I had my hearsay blur in my hand. <laughs> 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 so the rest of the night, you know, I may sit it out of the car. Every time I race, I may hit you out of the car. It's like 95 pounds. It's not that weight. I picked her up, and all the time I could sit, I could go to set, and I could grab a column, and I could go to the second, third. And then we couldn't back up, so I had to watch where I was at. And so I could get Monday, let go buy me a letter and go back on. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, was just, that was just one of my racing stories. I raced that thing constantly. And, uh, back then, they didn't have radar. I'm from the past time. They didn't have radar. It was, it, when they see you go by the road, go by, it was, they stop you. And it, they didn't even clock you. It's called excessive speed, 10 bucks. Well, me and Judge and Michael's got some pretty good buddies. I paid a whole lot of them. <laughs> 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 I had a 53 Ford in my first car. That's what I paid most of them. When I got the 57 Chevy, I kind of toned it down in town. They didn't know who it was, but they just see my car and they just stopped me. <laughs> That's what I thought they were doing. Until they called me up and they started this point system and come to find out the safety commissioner was a guy that might have Blue Ribbon where I worked, but he wouldn't let nobody wait on him but me. I knew he was. And I got this letter that I had to go to this commissioner's office and talk to him about my tickets. So they just start the point system of some kind. So when I walked in out there, I looked at him, he looked at me, and he says, what are you doing here? I said, well, I handed him that letter. He said, oh my, oh my. He said, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to let you go this time. This is cool, week. I said, okay. Well, it wasn't three days later. Sue was in the car. We was leaving Northeast 23rd. And I turned down Lottie. There's nothing between Lottie and 13th Street and those side streets. And I just decided I'd so off in front of Sue. <laughs> and we'll turn out past this one down the road. And I finally got down there and I turned on Broadway. I hit Broadway on down Main Street. When I stopped at Main Street, there was a uh, top car or a motorcycle car. And his eyes were the back of the head. I don't he was mad. He walked me all the way to 23rd Street. <laughs> he wrote me a ticket out. And uh, I think that's very thorough on the mountain skirt of the state commissioner's uh, desk. I couldn't have him. I said, there it is. You want my license? He said, well, how long can I keep it? I said, I got to have to go home. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. He said, well, I can't have no water, man, I don't want. But he said, oh, 
she has no more tickets. I said, okay, let me know whether or not. I never got another ticket in Oklahoma City. The last ticket I got was coming down Union after we moved up here. And I'm above the speed. <laughs> Except for your garage, and I've got pictures of your garage. Yeah, you know, we do. I've got pictures of adults in there. Yeah, I've got some of those. Well, I've been to the teacher's workshop. Have you been to that? Now they got an air conditioner after that. They get air conditioner. Next year, <laughs> I think we'll take three months off. Nobody's going to want to follow that. <laughs> We're, man, we appreciate that. I, this, this, is, this is what it's all about. And, uh, uh, I'll start crying, so I'm going to quit. Who is, uh, who's our prayer person tonight? I said, Mom. 